But that's the problem with a posh voice. It's got limitations. Can't sound scary with a voice like this. Can't sound sexy, all right? Now, I don't like talking in the bedroom. I think that sex should be a swift, silent, and clinical procedure at the best of times. <laughs> Whenever I do try and talk, it's always a disaster. I, um, was... No, no, shit. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. This is very important. Bit of housekeeping again. Look, um, my girlfriend told me quite <laughs> clearly, I'm only allowed to tell this next story on stage if I say that it happened to a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Wembley, everyone with me? All right? Let, let's do that one again. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> the other day, right, a friend of mine <laughs> was having sex with my girlfriend. <laughs> I, was having, I was doing the sex. <laughs> That's her bum, not her head, sir. And then there. Stop it! Stop it! No, it was beautiful. I was, I was having this. Stop it! I was, I was doing the sex. Okay. And it was that little postcoital moment of silence afterwards. You know, when someone has to say something. I heard myself saying the least sexy thing that has ever been said in a bedroom. It was like one of those slow motion moments where I couldn't cram the word back into my mouth. It was awful. I heard myself finishing, and as I came, I went, oh, oh <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> It's not the worst thing, all right? The worst thing, <laughs> the worst thing. Uh, my, my, I've got this one mate, right, who's like a proper, like, geezer. He's like, proper, like, oh, yeah, yeah, fucking lads on tour, called uh, Rory Haddon Payton. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a proper geezer. He? He'll drink anything. <laughs> this one time, oh, God, he downed an entire glass of red wine with fish. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> I, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> he got drunk. And as a joke, <laughs> with his girlfriend, as he came, he went, Mmm, Danon! <laughs> Definitely was! Definitely was! <laughs> oh, I love telling that on stage and then looking around the crowd at all the blokes in this room and realising there is not a single man in this house this evening that will not consider saying that now. <laughs> <laughs> Other than maybe Stewie Potts over here, eh? Doesn't want to wake her up. <laughs> In front of your father! Seriously, yeah, cover his ears. Eyes on you, pal. <laughs> no, I was telling that stupid boy. I was telling that story the other day. That Bravo one. I was doing a charity gig. Um, I do quite a lot of gigs for charity because I just care. Uh, <laughs> And this, this charity was actually one that's really important. It's a, you know, it's an amazing cause, and it's a charity that's very, very close to my heart. Save the lion, hashtag pray for the king. Akuna <laughs> Matata, you were taken from us too soon. Right, okay, sorry. That sometimes happens. I have Lion King Tourette's, don't worry. It won't really affect the show. <laughs> right, anyway, I was doing the gig. Not the same, it doesn't exist, which it fucking did. Anyway, I'm doing the gig. I'm doing the gig, right. And I told that story on stage, the Bravo one, the Bravo story, right? And there was a reviewer in from a newspaper, and in the review, they wrote, Whitehall larks around, claiming that after shagging, he says Bravo. Now, that's fine. Reviewers often put your jokes in print, nothing wrong with that. The problem is this. The newspaper in question <laughs> is a family newspaper, and therefore, they had attempted to censor the word shagging. So instead of reading shagging, it read like this. <laughs> I don't know about you, Emily, but I definitely read that as shitting. How weird does that make me sound? Like every time I go for a dump, I congratulate myself. Oh, oh bravo, Jack. Bravo, you. She is an absolute beauty. Oh, need to get her up on Instagram. <laughs> Come on, she's by the selfie. Get in there, love. Oh. <laughs> I've been living that down for weeks. <laughs> it, did, it did remind me, though. It did remind me of one of my favourite stories I've ever been told. I'm so happy to be able to share with you lovely people here this evening. <laughs> my friend, right, was on holiday in Spain. Okay, he's on holiday in Spain in this restaurant, and he goes to use their facilities. Okay, he drops the kids off at the pool, right? 
He goes to flush, doesn't work, the flush doesn't work. He goes four, five, six, seven, eight times he tries to flush this lavatory, it does not work. So he said he did the right thing. He didn't just leave it there, he decided he would inform one of the members of staff in this restaurant that there was a problem with their facilities, all right? So he set off out into the restaurant, he found a waiter who unfortunately didn't speak any English, he didn't speak any Spanish, he ended up having to kind of gesture to this man, he was like, yes, could you just come here? No. EC, por favor. No, leave them alone, Pedro. Just follow me. He ushered this waiter, got, got him into the toilet, just brought him into the loo. Yes. He pointed at his turd. He went to flush. It went down straight away. <laughs> How weird did he look? Like he just invited a waiter into the toilet to say goodbye to his shit. What a silly friend. <laughs> Brother, let's call it in the crossfire.